In this video, I'm going to decode another portion of the neuro exam, this time the eyes. If you'd like to better understand the visual system, don't turn away, because that learning starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's video is the second in a series I intend to make on decoding or demystifying the neurological examination. Many of you have gone to the neurologist and you've done various exercises that she or he asks you to do, but you might not fully understand the why behind why we're having you do these tests. And it's my hope that during this video series, I can decode or demystify some of it. My first video focused on the motor exam, and so if you haven't seen that, I've thrown a link up above, and I'll include links down in the description below in case you want to check that out. Today's video will focus on the visual system, how we see and how we move our eyes. My amazing MA Amber was kind enough to allow me to record while I did a full neurological exam on her, and I'm now taking segments or snippets and walking through them with you, and today's focus is on vision, so let's jump in. Evaluating vision is very important in MS neurology because the optic nerve is oftentimes attacked, causing an optic neuritis, where there's swelling of the nerve and a, and a loss of vision for the human being, so they can't see very well out of that eye. There's a second problem which can commonly happen in MS, where the eyes become unyoked. We have two eyes and they're locked together. So when you want to see left, they both move left. And when you want to see right, they both move right. And there's, as you can imagine, a bunch of circuitry in the brain that allows that to happen. Certain MS lesions can decouple that. So when you want to look left, maybe one eye goes and the other eye doesn't. And both assessing your visual input and assessing the way the eyes move is terribly relevant. And so we'll start off by discussing how we assess visual acuity or what you can see. Here is an example of a traditional Snellen chart. This is a jet black letter on a bright white background. And to be blunt, it's not a very good test for MS. The problem is it's not sensitive enough to pick up subtle damage to the optic nerve as commonly seen in optic neuritis. Now what you see here is a low contrast chart. This is in fact 2.5% of black, so it's very light gray on a white background. It's annoying to read, it's actually very challenging, but it's extremely helpful in picking up subtle dysfunction from damage to the optic nerve. This is a more appropriate eye chart for people impacted by MS. In this next test, we're going to be studying the pupils. So the pupil of your eye constricts when there's a bunch of light. And when there's a lack of light, it gets really big. And so you can think of the pupil kind of as like an aperture on a camera. Now there are normal responses when you shine a light in someone's eye. The pupil should behave in a certain fashion. Sometimes when there's been damage to the optic nerve and we shine a light in your eye, we have an abnormal response. And what you see here is a swing flashlight test where I shine a light in Amber's eye and I'm studying the way the pupil constricts and then I swing my flashlight to the other side and I look and see how that pupil constricts. And this allows us to determine if both pupils are healthy and working normally or if one has been damaged from something like an optic neuritis. The next test I'll show you is a direct visualization of the optic nerve. Using an ophthalmoscope, we shine a very bright light in the back of your eye. And this is the picture that we see. Now that bright yellow area is the head of the optic nerve. This is really cool when you think about it. Imagine for a second that my fist is the eyeball and that my forearm is the optic nerve headed back to the brain. We're shining a light here in the front of the eye. It's passing through the eye and it's allowing us to see the head of the optic nerve. In other words, we're quite literally looking at a portion of the central nervous system. Now, the appearance of the optic nerve can teach us whether it's swollen, whether it's healthy, whether it's damaged, and there's a lot that we learn from looking directly at it. 
It's also kind of awesome to consider that we're visualizing a portion of the brain. Kind of neat stuff. This next exam test looks at visual fields, which is a fancy way of saying, do you see everything that's in front of you or has part of it missing? The way that we do this is we square off with the person and I cover one eye and they cover the same eye and they look into my eye. And then I bring my hands halfway between them and me and I pull my hands out to the edge of what I'm able to see. They should also be able to see the same thing. I wiggle my fingers and I have them point to where they can see. And it allows us to discern if in fact all the visual fields are intact or if there's an area of loss. Missing vision in certain sections correlates to damage in various sections in the brain. This next test doesn't study the way that we see, but instead studies the way that our eyes move. Our eyes are complex and they're each one has six different muscles that allow the eye to move up and down and left and right and even turn. And what's even cooler is they're yoked together. So when you want to look left, both eyes look left. And when you want to look right, both eyes look right. We have binocular vision. There's a very complex circuitry in the brain stem, in the base of the brain, that allows all of that to happen. And if it's been damaged from an MS lesion, sometimes those eyes can become unyoked. And so as we test visual fields and I tell the person to look left, maybe only one eye looks left. Here you see me testing Amber's extraocular movements, having her look all the way up, all the way down, all the way left, and all the way right. There you have it, folks. Decoding yet another segment of the neurological examination. Today's video focused on vision, both how you see and how your eyes move. I hope that you found this video helpful, and I intend this to be the second in a series decoding different aspects of the neuro exam. I look forward to reading your comments in the section down below, and if you enjoyed the video, that's awesome. Please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying thank you for learning about MS with me.